Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Mike. Today we are going to be installing a Racer X fabrication oil catch can oil separator on a 2019 Mustang GT. Now the reason that I went with the Racer X oil catch can is for one it has a nice large capacity. I also like that they have a window built into the unit so you can see the amount of oil that's inside so you know when it needs to be emptied. And it also has a stopcock down at the bottom. So when it's time to drain it, you simply put a container underneath here, you open up the valve, and it drains without having to remove it from the car. Now, this unit is very nicely made. It's made of CNC machined billet aluminum. And uh, before we put it on the car, let's take it over to the bench and take a peek inside, see exactly how it works. The kit comes with the thank you card with contact information. It comes with Racer X fabrication stickers. Of course, it has the oil catch can. It comes with two oil resistant hoses to bypass the PCV valve flow. It includes two Ford connectors, a powder coated mounting bracket, and necessary mounting hardware. So let's take a closer look at how this thing's put together. We're going to open up the business end so we can see the baffles. All the units together, I'll show you the flow that the air goes through. It comes from the PCV into the lower port where it then hits a series of baffles, goes up and down, condensing the water droplets down to the bottom of the can the somewhat cooled air that contains the unburned fuel mixture then goes up the back of the can. It goes through a stainless steel filter and then it comes out this top port where it goes back to the intake manifold. So let's take a look at the baffles. The air fuel mixture would come in here. It would go down and it would begin to swirl and it would go through that series of baffles with holes in it eventually coming out the uh, back. It travels up the back of the can through this fine stainless steel filter where it then comes out of this port and it goes back to the intake manifold where it is reburned. So let's bolt this back together, tighten it down and install it on the car. Nope, that shortcut didn't work. Ah, not quite enough slack. Now the catch can is designed to sit here and to make use of these two radiator uh, mounting bolts. So you loosen up the bolts, you pick up that radiator mount, and then you sandwich the bracket, and then that leaves the oil catch can in the space over here. But we have hit a snag. If you look down in here, we have a wiring harness and that wiring harness sits directly below where the uh, oil catch can is designed to drain. Well, we're just gonna put it back together and call the company, see what they have to say. Here's a little trick for holding on to nuts that you don't want to fall in. Take a little piece of paper and put it right across your socket and then you can push the nut in it, and when you turn it over, it should hold on. And so now what we can do is we can drop it into the hole and get it threaded on the post. It was difficult to see what the problem was when I had the catch can 
on the car. So let me show you what I ran into. The catch can has this valve down at the bottom. This is the drain valve. And my intention was to attach this hose barb to the bottom like that. It's now it's hanging down here. And then I was going to take a length of hose and I was going to attach that on the bottom so then I could run the length of hose to a place where it would be more convenient for me to drain the oil. So the problem is the wiring harness sits about here so there's no room for the valve let alone the barb and the hose coming out the bottom. So I spoke to RacerX Fabrication. They said that they have heard of this issue in the past. They sent me an inline valve. So what we are going to do is we are going to get rid of the valve that this unit came with. And by the way, I did pre-loosen that. It doesn't just come off that easily. Uh, so we're going to get rid of that. So now we've reduced the amount of height down at the bottom of the unit. And I picked this up at the hardware store. This is called a street elbow. It is simply a right angle. So what we're going to do is we will attach this to the bottom of the oil catch can. We're then going to take this barb that was going to point straight down and we're going to thread it in here with the 90 degree angle and the hose barb installed, I'll now be able to connect a piece of hose without interfering with the wiring harness that's directly below the unit. I'll have the clearance. I'm then going to cut the hose at a convenient location. I will install the inline valve and then I'll be able to run the end of the hose and trim it and have it route to a place where it will be convenient to drain the oil into. I know what you're probably thinking, that's a lot to go through to install a product. This thing's really well made, I do want to use it, I really want to make it work. Um, RacerX Fabrication staff was very courteous and helpful in helping me come up with a solution. I do wish that in the future, if they can figure out exactly what models might have that clearance issue, that they can ship this kit with the parts that are needed from the onset and the end user won't have to rely on going to the hardware store and coming up with a solution uh, like I've done. That being said, let's put this in the car. We are back at it. The engine cover has been removed to give us access to the PCV line and the uh, shroud over the radiator has been removed to give us access to mount the oil catch can. So now it's time to put the oil catch can in place make sure that we have enough clearance underneath for the line and then find a good place to route the hose and the valve so we can reach the valve and make sure we have a clean place to collect the oil when we drain it from the oil catch can. We'll need to tighten down the 90 degree adapter on the bottom of the oil catch can once we determine which direction the oil drain line is going to go. With the oil catch can in place, we can now find a way to route the hose. Now, one of the things we need to do is make sure that there's enough clearance for me to reach my hand down in here and uh, open and close that valve when it's time to drain it. And so far, the best place I've found is I can put my arm over the radiator hose and underneath the overflow. And uh, it looks like I have just about enough reach uh, to place the valve down here where I can turn it on and off. Now as far as where we're going to get it out of the car, that's another consideration. I want to make sure that we're not just dumping the oil into the engine bay and make sure the best place to route the hose is convenient and it won't get in the way of doing any further maintenance. We are under the car and there is a look at the jack and jack stand that's on the Steeda jacking rails, which we installed in a previous video. We are looking for a good place to route the drain line from the oil catch can. And I think I found a good place to bring the line down right here. And you can see the coolant reservoir right above. So we're gonna aim for this place 
which is a little cutout in the uh, underbody shroud. Now that we know which direction the hose is going to go, I'm going to put some thread sealant on these assemblies and tighten them down in the right direction. I made a little flag with masking tape just to make it easier to see the mark where I need to align the barb to. Perfect. And now we can attach our drain line. So there's the spot we're going to be targeting to come out. I'm having a really hard time sticking this curved tube straight down to the place that I want it to come out on the bottom. So we're going to try a little something to make that easier. We're going to use a length of a sharpened dowel just as a guide. I'm just going to stick this into the beginning of the hose. We'll feed it down and then once we get it where it needs to be, we'll see if we can pull this out and uh, if we can get the hose to follow. With the oil catch can loosely in place, now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the line is running where we want it to and I'm going to mark exactly where on the hose I want to make that cut to install that valve in a place where I can easily reach it. Remove the oil catch can to the side. I can now see my mark where I want to install the inline valve, which is right here. I'm going to cut the hose and then we can reassemble everything and permanently mount the catch can in the car. I'm going to use a pair of bypass pruning shears to cut the hose, get a nice clean cut. Now I can install my valve. And with the inline valve in place, now I can put the oil catch can back in its final position. Tighten it down. Now for the easy part. We're going to take the PCV output, run it to the oil catch can, and then take it back to the PCV input on the intake manifold. We're just going to loosen the connector, remove that end of hose, loosen the connector here, and that piece comes right out. I'm going to install the two Ford connectors onto the lengths of hose that were provided as part of the oil catch can kit. Ended up using a heat gun to soften the hoses to allow me to get the connectors on better. The kit comes with two pieces of hose and they are different length. We're going to take the longer piece of hose and attach that to the return. And the shorter segment of hose will get attached to the PCV supply. Now it's just a matter of connecting these to the oil catch can. That's one. And two. Now all we have to do is dress where the drain comes out on the bottom of the car, reassemble the engine bay, and this project is complete. So here we are under the car. I'm gonna trim this hose so it comes out right about here and then I'm going to try to find a way to attach it right up here to the frame probably with a wire tie just so it stays in place. Now that the hose is trimmed we're going to see if we can affix it right there so it doesn't wander and then when it's time to drain the oil catch can we'll just be able to put a tray right under the car and drain into it. I'm going to use a wire tie to attach the hose so it doesn't move around. I don't have any place convenient to attach the wire tie to, 
So I'm going to use this little computer cable clip which has uh, 3M tape on the back. So I'll clean the frame with some alcohol swabs, stick the uh, wire organizer on there, and then I'll thread the wire tie through the cable organizer and attach it to the bottom of the hose. We will trim that and see if it holds. Well, it's installed, and I think you'll agree that that was a long way to go to install an oil catch can. In the time it took you to watch this video, you probably could have installed one of the uh, inline oil catch cans that are available. But for me, um, I was interested in this product. There wasn't a lot of information out about it. It's a very well-made product. Their customer service was very responsive, so I appreciate that. Um, it's not always about the destination, sometimes it's about the journey, and I really did enjoy, you know, not only the obstacles, but the solutions and finally getting this installed in the car. So for now, so far so good. I will uh, check back periodically and give you some updates as that catch can starts filling up and uh, let you know how uh, easy or not easy it is to uh, drain the oil. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey watching this video. My name is Mike. If you're new to the channel, the channel is Mike Fixed It. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Turn on post notifications. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much for watching my videos. Please leave comments in the spot below. I look forward to hearing from you. So for now, be good, be well, be safe, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye. Fixed it. And you'll have to admit that was a long way to go to install to install. Well, it's in, and I think you'll have to admit that was a long way to go to install. Well, it's in, and I think you'll have to admit that was a long way to go to install. <laughs>